You know, I thought Teofimo did a lot of good things in this fight. He, in my opinion, made some, I don't know if I want to say good adjustment or he always could fight that way. It's just that in this fight, he had to be, you know, on his P's and Q's. He had to bring out his best game plan. And he did, there were little things, but I thought they were effective. Like shorten up his stance when he was coming forward towards uh, Lomachenko. When Lomachenko was trying to win the foot, uh, the lead foot positioning, uh, Teofimo did a good job of backing up. And I think that's, you know, kind of like backing up, backing up, use a little slight lateral movement and then come back and to come forward towards Lomachenko, right? Never like totally losing those battles, the the, the lead foot uh, positioning battle, right? You could say in instance he did, but I think for the most part, he he did a good job on, you know, being aware of that, encountering those kind of movements and using his size to come forward. Uh, there's a lot of talks about how big his back was and yeah, I mean, the guy was the much bigger guy and he fought that way and I thought it won him to fight. Just throwing straight punches down the middle, whether they were landing or not, he was just outworking Lomachenko through most, uh, especially the first half of the fight. But you could say he was more effective in doing that for most of the fight, right? So in my opinion, I give the guy a lot of props. Um, I didn't think he can make those adjustments. I thought if he did, it would make this fight interesting, and he did, because he's the naturally bigger man, he's younger and uh, stronger than Lomachenko. But who was the A-side going into this fight, right? Who was the, the, the real A-side? If you look at this fight, if you look at the, uh, the promotion of the fight, you could say, you know, it's pretty even, but I think Teofimo was obviously the A-side. You could look at the scorecards, obviously, right? I mean, why so wide that way? Uh, you could take the night itself. Now, look, before I say this, understand I'm Hispanic myself. I'm, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. I was born in Puerto Rico, but it looked like a ESPN was presenting a you know, a showcase of the Latinos. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I'm Puerto Rican. I don't have a problem with that. But it seemed like they were showcasing, you know, all the best prospects, all the best Spanish fighters that uh, they want you to pay attention to. And some of them are good. Some of them are really good. Some of them are exciting, like uh, Edgar Berlanga. So I think Teofimo was the headline of this Spanish night on ESPN. And uh, he was treated like the A-side. I'm not just saying because it was they were showcasing Latinos on ESPN. There's many reasons besides that. The undercard could have been totally different. And I still think that Teofimo was treated like the A-side of this fight. Even though... Uh, Lomachenko is the more popular fighter coming in, right? He is the more accomplished fighter. He is the more notable fighter that people know about. That he mattered to ESPN. They wanted Teofimo to win. Now, this is not for me to say that Teofimo didn't actually earn a victory. I think he did. I think that he, if you just scored two men in the ring, you can say he won that fight. But definitely not in the margins that he won. And the only reason Bob Aaron made a statement that he was a little bit upset or he was upset with some of the judges' scorecards, he didn't want you to notice it. You know, a guy like Bob Aaron doesn't want you to notice things like that. So that's what he was upset about. Not the outcome. Definitely not the outcome. Right? 
if that was Floyd Mayweather in that ring, I think Floyd would have gotten the nod over to your female. Same performance. He's the seal of Lomachenko. That same performance, I think he gets the nod. They give him the benefit of the doubt. Right? And we've seen this play out in history. Uh, one that comes to mind is R Ruslan Provotnikov. Right? He was in a lot of close fights. Always came out on the short end. The one that really sticks out to me is when he fought Chris Algieri in a fight that most people thought he won that fight, right? And the, you could see the scorecards were just everywhere. It was, it didn't make no sense. He lost a split decision to Chris Algieri. This was a chance to fight Manny Pacquiao, a guy who he sparred with, who Manny Pacquiao, you know, promised that maybe one day they could get in the ring with each other. This was his chance to get that opportunity. One judge had it 117 to 109 for uh, Provotnikov. They thought he won nine rounds to three plus the two knockdowns. The other two judges had it 114 to 112 in favor of Algeri, saying that Algeri won eight out of those 12 rounds minus the two, uh, the two knockdowns. At this point, Ruslan Provotnikov has put on some pretty exciting fights. Okay? He's done well on HBO. He fought Timothy Bradley, another fight that was pretty close. Okay, I didn't have a problem with Timothy Bradley getting the nod, but that fight was close. He could have won that fight. Manny Pacquiao, Timothy Bradley, the first fight, right? Manny Pacquiao's the clear A side, a fight that most people thought he won. They give the fight to Timothy Bradley, right? Manny Pacquiao versus Jeff Horn, same thing, right? You could maybe blame it at blame it on Australian officials, and maybe there was something to it. But you know, this is Bob Arum, man. Bob Arum's been in the game for fifty years, or close to it, and so he's recognized worldwide in the boxing world. And Jeff Horn, they give Jeff Horn the decision to take Manny Pacquiao's WBO strap, right? And so. And there's many more examples of this, right? Sergey Kovalev has done great numbers going into the Andre Ward first fight with HBO. He has three straps, fights Andre Ward. <clears throat> they give Andre Ward the benefit of the doubt. They give him, you know, the fight. And a, and a fight, in my personal opinion, in a lot of people's opinion, Sergey Kovalev clearly dominated him, right? But most people thought he just won the fight, period, outright. They gave it to Andre Ward because Ward was the A-side. You can't be the A-side from a foreign country in America. Maybe in certain fights, but not... Especially when it comes to the, uh, the more notable stars in America. Regardless of your accomplishments. It's just not going to work out. It doesn't work out that way. We saw it with Triple G Canelo... Triple G has done great numbers for HBO. He's coming in with three of the straps. Canelo has a huge fan base, Mexican, Latino fan base, right? He's the he's the next one up. He's the heir apparent to Floyd Mayweather, who just retired, right? And in the first fight, most people thought Triple G won that fight by a pretty clear margin. They call it a draw. I mean, one judge even went as far as to score the fight <laughs> 118 to 110 which comes out to 10 rounds to 2 in favor of Canelo sounds familiar Saturday night one judge scores it 119 to 109 in favor of Teofimo saying that he won 11 rounds can you really say throughout that fight you can pick out 11 rounds that he clearly won or he just won and again, this is not a knock towards Teofimo. I thought he fought a very good fight. Showed a really good ring IQ. Did some subtle adjustments to, to make himself effective in this fight. But he also could have lost to Lomachenko, who should have been the A-side going into this fight, but wasn't treated that way. Wasn't given the benefit of the, of the doubt of every single round like Teofimo was. 
And that's why you got those wide scorecards. You know, when I used to hear people say that, you know, Lomachenko is a privileged fighter because of his promoter, I kind of always laughed at that because if you saw his second fight and people would say, well, there, there's the privilege, him in his second fight fighting for a world title, well, you could see that there was a clear message being sent to Lomachenko in that fight. And I thought Salido did some good work <clears throat> in that fight. He also fought very dirty. And I also know that if uh, he would have did that to a, a clear American A-side, uh, he would have been either one put on notice that he's about to get disqualified for all the low blows he landed on Lomachenko, or you know if it goes to the to the judges' scorecards that uh, you know that American A side would have gotten the nod. And so when it comes to boxing politics, it's very clear. It's very uh, it it seems very simple. What's going on here? If you are a foreign fighter. Um, with this, what they call a vanilla attitude, you know, just pretty quiet guy, got his shit in order, doesn't talk about his family problems in public, they're not interested in promoting you, you know, they're not, they're not too interested in promoting you, they're more interested in promoting uh, the American fighter who has, you know, who cries in public and, 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 and airs out his family business, you know, just the culture of today's Western society basically is what it is, right? This is why they, they you know, top rank, Bob Aaron kind of loves Tyson Fury for now. Although if I was Tyson Fury, I would watch my back because, you know, you said some things that can never be forgiven, my friend. Uh, but, you know, they like these, these chaotic uh, attitudes, and I'm just rambling right now, but the point is, Lomachenko was not the A side, although he should have been. With all his accomplishments until this point, he is the more notable fight fighter, the more recognizable fighter, to even casuals, and he wasn't treated that way. Not to take anything away from Teofimo Lopez, because I thought he did a good job, all right? But the politics, the tricks in the game of boxing, you know, it, it, it never fails to uh, reveal its ugly head. And that's what happened, and it should be obvious. That is my video. Peace.